Um, so I'm Nargis. Um, it's good to see you all. Um, so um, today I'm going to talk about behavior-driven development for everyone. The title really gives it away. But before I do that, um, and I tell you how I got introduced to BDD, I'd like to say what I do, where I work, and what we do. Um, I work, I'm a product designer, I work at us too in London. Um, yeah, as Matt said, some of you might go to Kukin Space tomorrow. Make sure you play football. It's my favorite sport. Um, <laughs> Um, I've been most recently spending my time as a design lead and a product lead, but by trade I am a designer and I've been a designer for, since I started working in this industry. I'm not going to tell you how long. Um, <laughs> Astu is a digital product studio. Um, we've got four studios around the world, one of them in Shoreditch in the T building. Um, and in London we are about 100 people. There are three main components to our business. We have our ventures. Um, we launch companies. We partner up with individuals to launch these companies. Uh, DICE is one of those, and it's a ticketing platform. We also have our game team that Matt mentioned. Um, they recently released Monument Valley 2. And the reason I'm telling you all of this is because we also have our client services, which is the part of, ooh, don't do that which is part of the business that I work in. We work all the way from inception to validation of an idea to launch, and we launch the product, we help the clients um, later on as well when the product is in the market with ongoing uh, optimization. So while working together with our clients, we make sure we pick the right tools and processes that um, best suit that project and that team. So collaboration is at the heart of what we do, and we are always looking for better ways to um, collaborate more effectively, and this is where BDD comes into picture for us. Before I got introduced to BDD, about four years ago, four years and a half maybe, this is how we would work together. A typical project might win something like this. We were given problems to solve in the form of a, a bunch of stories in the backlog. I guess everyone's familiar with that. We would discuss them as a team, product owners, developers, designers, um, and suggest potential solutions. And we would start to sketch our ideas and concepts, either on a wall or a piece of paper. Um, but we would try to get an understanding of what the story is. And eventually, we'd all agree that we understand it. We, um, we know what we're doing, and we would all um, go our separate ways to do, to do different things. This is how it looked like, though. This is, I'm talking about four years ago. So testers were doing their own thing. Developers were doing their own thing. Designers were over here doing their own thing. But it felt like, for me as a designer, that testers and developers knew what each other were up to. And they seemed to speak the same language. There was more discussions happening between them. In some cases, there were even BDD scenarios or an attempt to do BDD but it was limited to just developers and testers. It felt like a secret club. Don't join us. Um, and this was us. If, how, many of, how many designers are here? None. Oh, hello. Here, here we go. I see one. How many of you work with designers? Great. Um, I think you've seen this picture before. And, I, and I'm really against this. It shouldn't, we shouldn't be working like this. As designers, we were coming up with our own solutions to the problems. We would spend hours and hours trying to create wireframes, and then we would take these wireframes and then show it to the developers, and um, it meant that we had to ask them to review the designs, and we were, we were collaborating, we were working together collaboratively, but it felt like if we gave them the, the wireframes on their own, they wouldn't understand what was going on, and we had to spend hours and hours explaining what every wireframe was about. And for me, again, as a designer, I felt like um, I was designing before I really understood the problem, and i tell you why. The trouble starts when you are in those meetings, and this is the kind of questions that developers start to ask you, and testers. Um, I realized that developers and testers had already written a load of stuff about the app's behavior that we just hadn't covered in our designs. 
for me, it didn't make sense. It didn't make sense that I wasn't involved in these discussions from the start. And I truly believe, as a designer, it's not my job to come up with all the solutions to all the problems that exist um, in the form of a story. Um, but that's what we were trying to do. We were expecting designers to come up with, with those answers. And I asked myself, why weren't we involved in this process that seemed to be helping testers and developers so much? Um, so now I'd like to ask you a question. How many of you still require wireframes from designers for the developers to build off of? I see some hands. Thank you. And how many of you expect the designers in your teams to come up with the solutions to each problem? That's really good. Things have changed. <laughs> and that's what I like to call design-driven development. That's not how we work anymore. I'd like to take you through how we've changed things since we got introduced to BDD, and I'm hoping maybe this can help you um, with your processes. We had to learn a lot about BDD and how it works, and which parts work best for us, and who needs to be involved at what stages over these past four years. Every team at us too has their own um, variation on the process. And we might change things as time goes by, but this is what I'm going to talk about. This is what I personally found um, to work for us, as, uh, or on the teams that I work with, has been working for us. So we have some rules when it comes to BDD. One is involve everyone as early as possible. And by that, I'm talking about product owners, testers, developers, designers in the same room. If you cannot be physically in the same space, we get them on a vid video chat. Video chat is your, your friend. But the important thing is that every discipline is represented. If you have four developers in your team, one developer can join those sessions, and that's enough. Because then you have a, if you have a team that communicates, they can then go ahead and either show the feature files to the other developers or um, discuss things. But the most important thing is that every discipline is represented. This, um, this is rule number two. We can't start development on a feature or a story until we have written some BDD scenarios. This ensures we have a shared interest in coming up with those scenarios together. So we have we discuss our, our story, we have everyone in the same room. We have this exercise called example mapping. How many of you know um, what example mapping is? Um, on Cucumber website, there is a great article about how to do uh, example mapping as a practice, and it's written so well, and that's where I learned how to do this. Really suggest, if you haven't read it, to do read uh, about it. So. This is, uh, this is ADOS2, this is in one of our example mapping sessions. What we do, we come up with um, concrete examples for the story. And if you're familiar with the friends naming convention, um, the episode name always starts with the one where, the one with. And um, for example, the one where the server went down again. So we try to come up with lots and lots of examples. And because different disciplines are in the room, they bring their own different um, perspective, so you end up with lots of examples about that particular story. And then we use these examples. Um, we don't, this is like a workshop, all day workshop, or maybe even two hours, it doesn't have to be too long, depending to the size of the story and how many examples you come up with. But it's really important that product owners at that point, especially from the client side, if you work with clients, that are, they are in the room because they can tell you um, what's the priority and what isn't. We use these examples to sketch as a group, developers included. It's really important that everyone does the sketching. You'd be surprised the ideas that we, people come up with. Um, and we come up with potential design s solutions for each example. When we tend to stick them up on the wall, present it to everyone else, and we keep sketching more and more until we have one or two potential ideas or solutions that we would like to take forward. We diverge only after the sketching session. We don't, so all the way from the start to this point, we've been working together, everybody in the team, or one person per discipline. Um, after we diverge, this is what we're going to do, if you're wondering. <laughs> Designers work on prototyping, UI and user research. So 
use this time to talk your um, ideas and solutions to the, to the users, to your target audience, get feedback. Developers um, work on text spikes and lay the groundwork for the feature. And testers come up with additional test cases. You might be wondering who writes the Gherkin scenario, if you are. Um, anyone can do that. Um, in my previous project, um, Sky Kids, which I showed you, designers took charge of writing up the Gherkin scenarios. We would share them on GitHub, and everyone would approve it and give us feedback. If you volunteer for um, writing this down, then it's your job to make sure um, if people give you feedback, you review it, you change the scenarios. Um, we also had created these um, checkboxes in GitHub where if you read it, you would tick the box so you would know that um, that discipline, that person, that designer has read, um, read the feature file. Um, another thing I wanted to mention here, which I forgot. Yeah, it's that um, product owners um, the reason uh, I said we volunteer to write feature files and you don't need to have everyone in the same room is because I've worked with lots of clients where they get exhausted and I can see them in the room sitting down with us. They, they, they get exhausted when we're trying to come up with these um, Gherkin scenarios and I don't think it's the right way to do it. If you're together, you come up with these examples, then one person can spend time writing down everything else and then share it with everyone doesn't mean that people are not going to read it. And I'd like to tell you what difference has this all ma made for me, particularly as a designer. We no longer create wireframes for things that can be described much more simply with BDD scenarios. We still do wireframes, but not for everything. Discussions are much more frequent between team members rather than just the, at the beginning or the end of a sprint. If there is a problem, we hit the problem together and much sooner. We have a shared understanding before we go our separate ways to do our, our own thing. The team together comes up with the behavior of the product rather than just the design team or the development team. Development is now driven by collaboration and discussions rather than isolated ideas. Our focus is much more on solving the problem and delivering the end product rather than delivering our um, individual pieces of the puzzle. We have a single source of truth. We no longer rely on ambiguous one-liner stories in the backlog. There is a single source of truth that is accessible. And when I say accessible, not everyone knows how to use GitHub, and many designers still don't. So make it accessible for them. Put it on a Google Doc or any tool that makes it easy for them to read the feature file. Um, and if you haven't been listening to my talk so far, <laughs> this is what I'd like you to take away from it. Um, BDD isn't just for developers and testers. It's a process that needs to involve everyone in order for it to be effective. You should constantly refer to your BDD scenarios and make sure they are visible to everyone in the team. And three Amigo sessions are for more than just three people. I hope you know what three Amigo sessions are. Good, I see lots of nodding heads. Um, and finally, I'd like to say that for BDD to be successful, it needs to be embraced by the whole team. Every discipline brings their own unique perspective to the table, so every discipline should be invited to have a seat at the table. If we, if we are talking about BDD as a collaboration tool, then everyone should and needs to be involved in that collaboration. Thank you. Thank you.